Hey guys, welcome back to Out of My Mind. Today we're reading chapter 6, which starts on page 39 and ends on page 50. If you guys have enjoyed this book so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Out of My Mind. Without further ado, chapter 6. Miss Violet, Valencia, lives next door to us. Violets are purple and Valencia's oranges are, are well, orange. Purple oranges are just plain unusual, and so is she. She's a big woman, about six feet tall, with the biggest hands I've ever seen. They're huge. I bet she could put a full-size basketball in each of her palms and still have room left over. If Miss V is, well, like a tree, then my mom is a twig next to her. I was about two years old when I first started hanging out at Miss V's house. Mom and Dad hardly left me with anybody at first, but sometimes... Their work schedules overlapped, and they needed a third person to help out. Mom said Miss V was the very first visitor when I first came home from the hospital, the first person to just pick me up like any other baby. A lot of my parents' friends have been scared to even touch me, but not Miss V. Miss V wears huge, flowing dresses, must be miles of material in those things, all in the crazy color combinations. Bubblegum pink with fire engine red, with peachy sherbet, with bright cinnamon, and all shades of orange and purple, of course. She told me she makes the dresses herself. I guess she'd have to. I have never seen anything like them in any store in the mall, or in the hospital either. Miss B and Mom used to work together as nurses at the hospital. Mom told me the children there had been crazy about her. She wore the same bright outfits in the premier ward, the kids' cancer ward, and the children's burnt unit. Color brings life and hope to these children, she denounced boldly, and daring anybody to disagree. I guess nobody did. I remember sitting on Miss B's porch that very first time. Mom and Dad looked concerned, but Miss B held me tightly and bounced me on her knees. She must have a hidden microphone under those fl flowing clothes. She has one of those voices that can make anybody shut up. Turn and listen. Of course I'll watch Melody, she said with certainty. Well, Melody is, well, you know, really special, Dad said hesitantly. All kids are special, Miss V had replied with author authority. But this one had hidden superpowers. I love to help her find them. We can't possibly pay you what this is worth to us, Dad began. Miss V had shrugged and said with a smile, I'll appreciate whatever you can give me. My dad looked sheepish. Well, thanks, and I'll get that ramp finished this weekend. I just need to make one more trip to the lumber yard. Now, that will be a big help, Miss V has said with a nod. Melody can be a handful, Mom had warned. Miss V lifted me into the air. I've got big hands. We want her to reach her highest potential, Dad added. Oh, gag me, Miss V said, startling him. Don't get bogged down in all those touchy feelings feely words, and phrases you read in books on disabled kids. Melody is a child who can learn and will learn if she sticks with me. Dad looked embarrassed, but then he grinned. Bring her back in 20 years. You'll have her back home by supper time. So, most work days I end up in Miss Valencia's place for a couple of hours until mom or dad could get me home. When I got older, I went over to Miss V's every afternoon after school. I don't know how much they paid her, but it couldn't have been enough. From the very beginning, Miss Valencia get, gave me no sympathy. Instead of sitting me in the special little chair my parents had bought for me, she plopped me on my back in the middle of the floor on a large, soft quilt. The first time she did that, I looked up at her like she was crazy. I cried. I screeched. She ignored me, walked away, and flipped on her CD player. Loud marching band music blared through the room. I liked it. Then she came back to put my favorite toy, a rubber monkey, a few inches from my head. I wanted that monkey. It squeaked when you touched it, but it may as well have been a million t miles away. I was on my, my back, stuck like a turtle. I screamed louder. Miss B sat down on the quilt. Turn over, Melody, she said quietly. Sometimes she can make her voice really soft. I was so shocked. I stopped yelling. I couldn't turn over. Didn't she know that? Was she nuts? 
She wiped my nose with a tissue. You can turn over yourself, Melody. I know you understand every word I say to you, and I know you can do this. Now roll. Actually, I never bothered to try very hard to roll anywhere. I'd fallen off the sofa a couple of times, and it hurt. So I usually just waited for Mom or Dad to move me comfort to a comfortable position. Look at how you're lying. You're already on your side, halfway there. Use all that screaming and hollering energy you've got to take to you to, you to another position. Toss your right arm over and concentrate. So I did. I strained. I reached. I tried so hard. I farted. Miss V cracked up, but slowly, slowly, I felt my body rolling to the right, and then, unbelievably, plop. I was on my stomach. I was so proud of myself, I screeched. I told you so, Miss V, said, victory in her voice. Now, go get that monkey. I knew better than to protest, so I reached for it. The monkey was now only two inches from my hand. I tried to scoot. My legs kept doing the opposite of what my head wanted them to do. I wiggled. I grabbed a fistful of quilt and pulled. The monkey got closer. You're a smart little cookie, Miss V told me. I gave the quilt another tug. And finally, gradually, I had the monkey in my hand. I clutched it, and it squeaked as if it were glad to see me. I grinned and made it squeak again and again. After that workout, you must be hungry, she said. She fed me a vanilla milkshake first, then my vegetables and noodles. Miss Valencia always serves dessert first, and I always eat all my food. The healthy part, and the yummy part too. It's our secret. Miss V is the only person who lets me drink soda. Coke, Sprite, to heat and treat. I love those nose tickling burp. Mom and Dad mostly give me milk and juice. Nella Yellow is my favorite. Miss V even started calling me that. At Miss V's house, I learned to scoot and then to crawl. I never win a baby crawling contest, but by the time I was three, I had learned to get across a room. She made me figure out how to flip myself over from front to back and back to front. She was tough on me. She let me fall out of my wheelchair onto pillows so I could learn how to best catch myself. Suppose somebody forgets to fasten that seatbelt of yours, she said in that voice that sounded like she was chewing gravel. You better know what to do or you'll bust your head wide open. I didn't want a busted head, so we practiced. She sent me back home, tell mom I had a good dinner and a good poop. I have no idea why parents think that's so important. Then wink at me. I was like her secret mission. Once I started school, however, I discovered I had a much bigger problem than just falling out of my wheelchair. I needed words. How was I supposed to learn anything if I couldn't talk? How was I supposed to answer questions or ask questions? I knew a lot of words, but I couldn't read a book. I had a million thoughts in my head, but I couldn't share them with anybody. On top of that, people didn't really expect the kids in H5 to learn much anyway. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't have been much more than six when Miss V figured out what I needed. One afternoon after school, after a snack of ice cream with caramel sauce, she flipped through the cable channels and stopped at a documentary about some guy named Stephen Hawking. Now I'm interested. I'm in almost anything that has a wheelchair in it. Duh. I even like the Jerry Lewis telethon. Turns out that Stephen Hawking has something called ALS, and he can't talk or walk. And he's probably the smallest man in the world, and everybody knows it. That is so cool. I bet he gets really frustrated sometimes. After the show went off, I got real quiet. He's like you, sort of, isn't he? Miss V asked. I pointed to yes on my board and then pointed to no. I don't follow you. She scratched her head. I pointed to need on my board and then to read. Need, read. Need, read. I know you can read lots of words, Melody, Miss V said. I pointed again. More. I could feel tears coming. More, more, more. Melody, if you had to choose which would you rather be able to do? Walk or talk? Talk. I pointed to my board. I hit the word again and again. Talk, talk, talk. I have so much to say. So Miss V made it her mission to give me language. She ripped all the words off my communication board and stared from scratch. She made me 
made the new words smaller so more could fit. Every single space on my talking board got filled with names and pictures of people in my life, questions I might need to ask, and a big variety of nouns and verbs and adjectives so I could actually compose something that looked like a sentence. I could ask, where is my book bag? Or say, happy birthday, mom, just by pointing with my thumb. I have magic thumbs, by the way. They work perfectly. The rest of my body is sort of like a coat with the buttons done up in the wrong holes. But my thumbs came out with no flaws, no glitches, just my thumbs, go figure. Every time Miss V would add new words, I learned them quickly, used them in sentences, and was hungry for more. I wanted to read. So she made me flashcards, pink for nouns, blue for verbs, green for adjectives, piles and piles of words I learned to read, little words like fish and dish and swish. I like rhyming words, they're easy to remember. It's like a buy one get the rest free sale of them all. I learned big words like caterpillar, mosquito, and words that follow crazy rules like knock and gnome. I learned all the days of the week, months of the year, all the planets, oceans, and content, continents. Every single day I learned the new, world, new words. I sucked them in and grabbed them up like they were Miss V's cherry cake. And then she would stretch out the cards on the floor, position me on a big pillow so I could reach them, and I pushed the cards into sentences with my fist. It was like stringing the beads of a necklace together to make something really cool. I'd like to make her laugh, so I put the words into wacky order sometimes. The blue fish will run away. He does not want to be dinner. She also taught me words for all the music I heard at home. I learned to tell the difference between Beethoven and Bach, between a sonata and a concerto. She'd pick a selection on a CD, then ask me the composer, Mozart. I'd point to the correct car from the choices she set in front of me. Then I'd point to the color blue on my board. Huh? She asked when she played a selection from Bach. I'd point to the correct composer, then once again touch the color blue on my board. I also touched purple. She looked confused. I searched around, searched around for the right words to explain what I, what I meant. I wanted her to, her to understand that music was colorful when I heard it. I finally realized that even Miss V couldn't figure out everything in my head. We kept going. Sometimes she'd play hip-hop music, sometimes oldies, music, and the colors it produced flowered around her as easily as her clothing. Miss V took me outside in all kinds of weather. One, one day she actually let me sit outside in the rain. It was steaming hot and I was sticky and irritable. It must have been about 90 degrees outside and we were sitting on her porch watching the storm clouds gather. She told me the names of all the clouds that made up stories about them. I knew that later she'd have the names of every kind of cloud on words for me. Big old Nimbus up there. He's black and powerful and can blow all the other clouds out of the sky. He wants to marry Miss Cumulus Cloud, but she's too soft and pretty to be bothered with such a scary guy. So, he gets mad and makes storms, she told me. Finally, old Nimbus got his way and the rain came down around me. And Miss B, it rained so hard I couldn't see past the porch. The wind blew and the wet coolness of the rain washed over us. It felt so good. A small leak on Miss B's porch let a few drops of rain fall on my head. I laughed out loud. Miss V gave me a funny look, then hopped up. You want to feel it all, she asked. I nodded in my head. Yes, yes, yes. She rolled me down the ramp Dad had built, both of us getting wetter every second. She stopped when we got to the grass, and we let the rain drench us. My hair, my clothes, my eyes, and my arms, my hands. Wet, wet, wet. It was awesome. The rain was warm, almost like bath water. I laughed and laughed. Eventually, Miss V rolled me back up the ramp and into the house where she dried me off. Changed my clothes and gave me a cup of chocolate milk. She dried off my chair, and by the time Dad came to pick me up, the rain had stopped and everything was dry once more. I dreamed of, cho I dreamed of chocolate clouds all night long.
that wraps up chapter six. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you did, hit that like button and I will see you guys next time.